Hey guys, today I have a tip on how to use Foundry profiles in Ansys Fluent and how useful they can be for coupling complex systems or writing custom field variables. Foundry profiles are very useful when you have a variable which is changing either in the x, y, z direction or within time for a transient simulation. Boundary profiles also allow you to couple multiple simulations together and transfer boundary data between those simulations. So if you have a complex system with multiple components, you can simulate each component individually and simplify the calculation and transfer data from one boundary to another for each simulation. For the example that we're going to look at today, we're doing a simulation here of a backward facing step uh, and we're looking at the turbulent flow over that backward facing step. You can see our step here is our region of interest. So we want to analyze the flow as it travels over the step and the reattachment point of that flow. What you can see here is that we have a very short inlet condition. And to get accurate results of the flow over the step, we want to make sure that our inlet profile of our velocity is fully developed. If we define the inlet velocity as just a constant, so in this case 41.7, and we look at our inlet velocity profile, we can see that we're just getting a constant velocity all the way across our domain. And since our domain is very small here, we're not going to get fully developed flow before our region of interest or the step. So to get that developed flow without having to simulate the full inlet domain for this problem, we're going to use an inlet velocity profile. So there's two ways that we can do this. We can either create that, that profile by hand in something like Excel or MATLAB, or we can do a secondary simulation and transfer that data to our model here. So in this case, we're going to take a secondary simulation we're going to model the inlet or the upstream flow before our backward facing step and then transfer that velocity profile into the simulation. So now we're in our secondary simulation and you can see what our domain looks like. So we have a parallel plate path that's about four meters in length. And what we're going to do is we're going to define the inlet velocity for our problem as just a constant variable. So in this case, 46.8 meters per second. And we've calculated our entrance length to be around three meters or so. So we're gonna go ahead and run this simulation and then extract the fully developed velocity profile and export that as profile data. So our simulation has been run. The next thing we can do is create a line at the develop point. So in this case, we created a line near the end of the domain here to make sure that our flow is fully developed. So what we can do now is we can go to File, we can go to Export, and we can export a profile. And in this Profile or Write Profile window, what we're going to do is we're going to select the line that we created. We can select the variables we want to export. So in this case, we're going to export the velocity magnitude. And we can also export our turbulence parameters. So we can export the turbulent kinetic energy, or K, and the turbulent dissipation rate, or epsilon. We're going to go ahead and write that profile. And we'll save it with a name like inlet profile step. And go ahead and click OK. So now we can analyze what the profile data looks like from the profile that we exported. So this is the standard format for profile data in Fluent. And we start by defining the name of the profile on the top line. So in this case, we just called it developed line. We have this point modifier to show that we are exporting point or node data. And this number here, 80, is the number of data points that we have in each data set. So what you can see is that we now have our x data, we have our y coordinate, we have the velocity magnitude at those node points, and we also have our other parameters like the turbulent kinetic energy as well as the turbulent dissipation rate. So we can now take this profile 
and read it into our original simulation and use it to define our inlet profile. So now that we're back in our original simulation, we can go to File, we can go to Read, and we can read in that profile. So we're going to select the profile data that we exported. And what we can do now is we can go to our boundary conditions, we can go to our inlet, and we'll now have access to that profile data for defining our velocity magnitude and our turbulence parameters. So in velocity magnitude here, we can go to the drop down menu and we can see this UDF or profile that exists. So for the velocity magnitude, we're going to select our developed line velocity magnitude. And for our turbulence parameters, we're going to change this to K and epsilon. And for our K value, we can go ahead and select our turbulent kinetic energy. And for our dissipation rate, we can select the dissipation rate. And we can go ahead and click apply. So now if we initialize our solution, we can go to the results tab and we can take a look at how those profiles came in. So we can go to results, we can plot the profile data, and we can take a look now on what our velocity profile looks like. So we'll plot velocity, and we'll do that in the y direction. So now what you can see for our inlet velocity, we're now getting a turbulent, fully developed flow of profile, which is great for our problem. We can also look at what our turbulent kinetic energy looks like, as well as our turbulent dissipation rate. So the other thing we want to note as well, when we're transferring data between two different simulations, it is unlikely that our mesh values are going to match correctly. So if we look at our velocity magnitude here, you can see that we have a bunch of discrete points that were exported from those node or mesh elements from our secondary simulation. And they may not necessarily match up exactly with our first simulation that we're going to run. So we're going to have to do some interpolation of these points from our secondary simulation onto our initial simulation. So if we go to the boundary condition tab here, we can select this profiles. And we can see on the right here that we have a few different interpolation methods for the boundary profile. We can either keep it as constant or we can use an inverse distance or a least squares method to interpolate those points across our new mesh values. In this case, we can just keep it on constant because our mesh values actually match up correctly. And especially when you're doing something like a transient simulation where your time steps may not match with your points directly, it's always good to check your interpolation method and make sure that you're getting an accurate interpolation between your profile data and your new mesh or new simulation that you're running. So with all that set, we can run our calculation and we can see how our results look with our fully developed flow profile. Now that our calculation is complete, we can look at a velocity contour and we can confirm that our flow profile looks correct. So if we look at the velocity profile here, we can see that we're getting an accurate velocity profile at the inlet. So we have zero flow or zero velocity along the walls due to our no slip condition and that gradually increases as we move into our free stream. So our velocity profile is being correctly captured and correctly implemented in this original simulation. And it's giving us accurate simulation results for our region of interest or the backward facing step here. So that was a quick tutorial on how to write, read, and use boundary profiles. Boundary profiles are very useful if you want to couple either complex systems where you can break apart the system into multiple individual simulations, or if you wanted to do something like maybe we wanted to implement some heating along this top wall, and we want that temperature along the top wall to vary from the left side here to the right side, we could write a profile data for that. Or we could write a profile data for pretty much any other variable in our simulation to give custom boundary conditions to any number or variable that we want to look at. Boundary profiles are incredibly useful and it's a good tool to have in your tool belt when doing modeling and simulation work. And I recommend that you try out some different problems, try to create your own 
profiles for either heating, velocity profiles, or any other variable that you want to look at, and give it a shot for the problem that you're trying to analyze. With that, I'd like to say thank you for watching the video. If you have any suggestions for further videos, you can leave them down in the comments below. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.